The Jack Benny Program, transcribed, presented by Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. The teacher said, what blend is best? The college class replied, those lucky strikes are happy, smoke so mild and rich inside. I'd whirl and twirl upon my skates and do a fancy spin. Then cut these words right in the ice for my lucky's win. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Enjoy your cigarette. Enjoy truly fine tobacco that combines both perfect mildness and rich taste in one great cigarette, Lucky Strike. For only fine tobacco gives you both perfect mildness and rich taste. And LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So, friends, be happy, go lucky. Try a carton of Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky strike. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky strike today. Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, a little over a month ago, Jack Benny made his first and only appearance in television. Last week, the radio and TV editors of the United States conducted a poll. And who do you think was selected as the most outstanding personality in television? Don. And which comedian was picked as having television's funniest program? Don. And who do you think was chosen as television's most popular? Don, Don, uh, we, we can't do this introduction. Why not? We wrote it too soon. They picked Milton Berle. <laughs> so you'll, you'll, you'll have to think of something else. Okay, Jack. Uh, wait a minute, Don. Jack Benny, do you mean to say that when you heard there was going to be a poll, you had the nerve to assume they were going to pick you? Well, do... You never wait for final results, do you? What? Every time you made a picture, you were so sure you were going to win the Academy Award. Look, Mary. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You're the only actor in Hollywood who's got 12 bottles of gold polish and no Oscars. <laughs> Well, for your information, Mary, that polish isn't going to waste. Well, what do you mean? Come here a minute. You know that bowl in my living room that's full of goldfish? Uh-huh. Sardines. <laughs> I wondered how you trained them to jump through onion rings. <laughs> It'd be great for television, right? Huh? Now, Don, due to this unfortunate turn of events, you'll have to give me another introduction. But, Jack, I still think that even though you did only one program in TV, you should have been selected as television's greatest star. Well, well uh... I agree with Don, Jack. Not only did you look youthful and handsome, but you're a master showman. Oh, man. Why, Jack, I thought your timing was absolutely... Hold it, kids. I know Christmas is coming, but let's not get panicky. <laughs> So that's it, using flattery to get Christmas presents. Phil, I'm surprised you didn't go along with them. Why should I butter you up for a lousy pair of shoelaces? <laughs> Wait a minute, Phil. I'll admit that three years ago I gave Don Wilson a pair of shoelaces for Christmas. But I only did that for a gag. Well, I'm ready for another gag. They broke this morning. <laughs> Really? I, I knew I should have gotten the ones with the metal tip. <laughs> anyway, fellas, I still think that you got a lot of nerve. Oh, I'll get it. Hello? Yeah, yeah, she's here. Hold the wire. Mary, it's for you. Oh, thanks. Hello? Oh, hello, babe. Where did you get into town? Your sister, babe? Yeah. What? Oh, that's wonderful, babe. Where are you staying while you're here? Well, be more specific. Which YMCA? <laughs> What? Uh, how were things at home when you left? Aunt Clara had a boy? Yeah, Aunt Clara had a boy this time. Oh, just what she wanted. That makes it even, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, 12 of each. <laughs> uh, babe, what are you doing in California? Uh, you have to go to San Francisco? So soon? But it seems like they just painted that bridge. <laughs> Mary. Well, tell me, babe, if you're going to San Francisco, what are you doing here in Los Angeles? Lawsuit? 
You're going to sue Phil Harris? But why? Oh, babe, I'm sure he doesn't mean you when he sings about the thing. <laughs> what? Your picture's on the music? <laughs> got a case. <laughs> so long, babe. See you later. Well, Phil, Phil, that was very good, but I still can't understand it. Well, Jack, the sportsman quartet are here, and they have a version of that same song that may explain it to you. The quartet? Well, go ahead, boys. Let's hear it. Whenever Mr. Harris used to open up his mouth, you knew that he was going to sing that song about the South. Now just when he's been quieter than we can't remember when, he learns a song about, and here we go again. Oh, he learns a song about, and here we go again. Phil Harris, we all kind of like the way you sing a song, but don't you think it's possible to sing one song too long? If you would change a lyric or two, your hooper, you might hike, so why not sing about... The cigarette we like, so oh, why not sing about the cigarette we like? For deep down smoking satisfaction, lucky is the one. You'll never take a puff that's rough, that's why they're so much fun. They are so mild and tastier too, you'll say for goodness sake. Oh, let's all light up a the cigarette we like. Oh, let's all light up a the cigarette we like. After all is said and done, it's LSM the team. So round and firm and fully packed and on the draw so free. Be happy and go lucky with us and join us at this mic. Then we can sing about the cigarettes we like. Oh, we can sing about the cigarettes we like. Don, I get a much better picture of it now, but I would have enjoyed it even more if Phil's orchestra wasn't off-key. What do you mean, off-key? Now, let me tell you something, Jackson, that you may not know. Some of my musicians are symphony men. They used to be with Giannini. <laughs> That's Toscanini. Giannini. A natural mistake for a chap whose wife owns the Bank of America. <laughs> Well, I'm not interested. Come in. Mr. Benny. Yes? I'm from the Red Arrow Messenger Service. I was told to give you this envelope. This? Oh, yes. I, I know what it is. Thanks. Hey, you're welcome. Oh, oh, just a minute, boy. Here. Here's a tip for you. Oh, boy, a nickel. Now I can move to Beverly Hills. <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad they finally sent this envelope over. Uh, what is it, Jack? Well, I'm going to be interviewed by a radio commentator, and she sent me the question, so I'll have to think about the answers. Mary, here, you go over this with me and read the questions just as they're written, will you please? Okay. <clears throat> Here's the first question. Tell me, Mr. Benny, where were you born? Uh, Waukegan, Illinois, February 14th, 1911. <laughs> Mary, ask me the next question. Well. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Mr. Benny, we've seen many pictures of you in a sailor suit. What year did you enter the Navy? 1917. Go ahead, Mary. Next question. <laughs> uh, wait a minute, Jack. You were born in 1911 and went into the Navy in 1917? Yes. Next question. Now, hold it, Jackson. If you were born in 1911 and went in the Navy in 1917, you would have been only six years old. Next question, Mary. Jack, how could you possibly get into the Navy when you were only six years old? I had a tough draft board and shut up. <laughs> now, go ahead, Mary. Ask me the next question. Okay. Now, Mr. Benny, this is your 19th year in radio, isn't it? Yes. Uh, who was your first sponsor? Uh, Canada Dry Ginger Ale. Next question, Mary. Well, after they fired you, what did you... Hold it. <laughs> Let me see that. That's after they hired me. After they fired me. A natural mistake for a gal who broke down the garage door and pulled the exhaust pipe out of your mouth. <laughs> 
Mary, this is a real legitimate interview, so let's be serious. Now, ask me the next question. All right. Mr. Benny, tell me something about Rochester, your butler. Rochester? Yes. How long has he been with you? Well, Rochester's been with me 14 years. As a matter of fact, it'll be exactly 14 years in March. Well, how did you happen to find Rochester? I'm glad you asked me that. It's a very interesting story. 14 years... Jack, I know how you found Rochester. Let's get on to the next question. But wait a minute, Mary. I'm going to have to do it when they interview me on the program. So I might as well get it all clear in my mind now. 14 years ago, I was in New York. It was about the middle of March, 1937. The weather was so nice, I decided to take a little drive. I was driving along 7th Avenue, around 134th Street. In my Mary Maxwell car, I go roaming near and far. Oh, da dum da dum da dum da da dum bum 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 Ah, there's nothing like an auto ride on a day like this. Gosh, how time flies. Here it is, 1937. I've sure had this car a long time. I bought it secondhand, too. Got it from the Smiling Pilgrim. <laughs> What am I laughing it up for? I'm all alone. <laughs> In my Mary Maxwell... Ah, oh, what a beautiful day. The month of March can be so nice in New York. Trees beginning to bud, birds are singing. Gee, it's great to be alive. I'm glad Mary pulled that exhaust pipe out of my mouth. <laughs> she was right, I did get another job. In my Mary Maxwell car, I go roaming near and... <laughs> you like that? Hey, you, this is all your fault. My fault? You think just because you drive a taxi, you can smash in other people's cars? But, mister... Don't but, mister me. I'm going to sue you and your taxi company for damages, because it was your fault. But, mister, I was parked here when you hit me. This is a gas station. <laughs> well, I can't understand how I could have run into you. Neither can I. I was up on the green grass. <laughs> Never mind that. Let me see your driver's license. Okay, here it is. Hmm. March 18th, 1937. Issued to Rochester Van Jones. 5 feet 10 inches, 155 pounds, 31 years old, Orchichornia. What's that? Dog eyes. <laughs> my car, and I'm going to take you into court and get every cent you've got in the world. You can reach in my pocket and do that. <laughs> well, you better think it over, and I'm willing to be reasonable. If you want to arbitrate and settle this out of court, I'll be home all afternoon. Hey, do you think that a new taxi driver you hired will work out, Andy? I don't know, Andy. see why you had to hire a driver in the first place. We only got one cab and I can drive that. Listen, Amos, when you reach as our position in business the world, you has got to have people's working for you. Yeah, well, I can't see where we has reached no position like that. Listen, Amos, <laughs> do you realize that last month we lost less money than any month since we've been in business? <laughs> yeah, but there's a reason for that. Last month only had 28 days in it. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. You know, Amos, if we can find a month short enough, we'll be able to break even. Yeah, but then I still think that we should wait till we start making money before we go around hiring people. No, no, Amos. People is the thing. <laughs> if we ain't got nobody working for us and we go bankrupt, there ain't gonna be nobody sorry for us but us. And us ain't enough people to absorb all that sorrow. <laughs> well, then we ain't bankrupt yet, though. I know, but we're just getting into those long months. Well, I still think that I should be out there driving that cab myself. Uh, here comes Rochester, your new driver. Uh, hello there, Rochester. How was business this morning? Bang up, gentlemen. Bang up! <laughs> uh, what do you mean? I had an accident with a man named Jack Benny. Jack Benny? 
Oh, that must be the radio comedian. If it is, this is really bad. <laughs> He's supposed to be the cheapest man in the world. <laughs> cheapest man in the world? Yes, sir. I hear he lives so close to his money that even his skin feels like an outsider. <laughs> and I also hear that he's got a zipper on his wallet that has yet to make his first zip. <laughs> what a man he must be. Oh, he can't be so bad, gentlemen. In fact, he said he'd be home all afternoon if we wanted to arbitrate. Wanted to arbor who? The man said, arbitrate. Arbitrate. Well, now, there, if that ain't any coincidence, <laughs> arbitrate happens to be the one word in the English language with which I ain't familiar. <laughs> well, why don't you look it up in the dictionary, Dan? Yeah, that's what I'll do. I got the dictionary right here. Yeah. Arbitrate. R. <laughs> What is the second letter? You ain't got the first one yet. I know I ain't. I'll get the first letter. I'm working on the second. Now, let me see here. Well, hello there, boys. How's everything going? Oh, not so good, Kingfish. Rochester here done had an accident in the taxi cab. Well, that's bad, boys, bad. It's worse than that. The man he accidented with is going to arbitrate him. Uh Uh-oh. That ain't good, boys. How you know? You have been arbitrated? nothing yet. <laughs> to act as an umpire. Well, the man wants to play baseball. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Listen, Kingfish, you was thinking of umpire. This here is umpire. Well, what is the difference? Well, there's a baseball umpire, the British umpire, and the umpire state building. <laughs> Three entirely different works. Arbitrate to settle a dispute. That's it, gentlemen. I think Mr. Benny wants to settle this dispute. Oh, I know that all the time. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, well, Kingfish, you better come along with us. We got to go to see this man that Rochester accidented with. Yeah, well, you go along in my place, Kingfish. I better take the taxi cab over to the shop and fix it. Yeah, okay, we better go. And remember, when we seize the man, let's all arbitrate in the same direction. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to watch that. Come on, let's get on over there. Come on. <laughs> Well, here is, Kingfish. This is the right place, ain't it, Rochester? That's what it says here on the card. Yeah, good. Yes? Uh, excuse us for protruding, but, uh, <laughs> I, as a general manager, general counsel, and everything else for the first air taxi cab company of America eliminated. Yeah. And I, as likewise. Oh, yes. Uh, you men are here about the accident. Uh, come right in. I presume that your drivers informed you of the circumstances and my position in this case. Oh, yes, sir. He done did that. Now, Mr. Benny, if you'll just make us out a check for $50, we'll forget the whole thing. <laughs> me pay you? Listen, you start those tactics with me, you won't even get the first base. There you are, gentlemen. I told you the man wanted to play baseball. <laughs> baseball? Look, don't talk in riddles or I'll turn this matter over to a lawyer. Lawyer? Well, here's my card, Mr. Benner. Help Wait me. a minute, Chair. Wait a minute, Kingfish. You was on our side. I am. Sure. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I got my hapers as the head of a car puzzle there. <laughs> now, look, you boys. You pay me for the damage to my car, or I'll take you to court. Well, now, just a minute there, Mr. Benny. You acting kind of hasty. You ain't even let us tell our side of the story. I don't care about your side of the story. I'll have my lawyer see you in the morning. Well, now, and... just a minute, Mr. Benner. Just a minute. Uh, uh, hold it, please. Uh, uh, see, Andy, come here. Yeah. We got to do a little conferencing. No, no, Rochester, you stay where he is. This is just for the executive of the company. Yeah, Rochester, we'll put up a bulletin for the employees. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Kingfish, uh, 
You look like you've done gimmick us a gimmick here. Well, yeah, I just don't give myself an idea in the head, yeah. Sure. Now, look, uh, uh, like we, uh, it, it seems to me we're going to have to pay Mr. Benny, and we ain't got no cash. Yeah, and I don't think we can give him no check, neither. He look like a vegetarian. <laughs> if he don't see no green in front of him, he ain't going to bite, I tell you. That. Then, look here. I done noticed that uh, Mr. Bennett done answered the door by itself. In other words, putting it in the vehicular. That means that he ain't got no gentleman's gentleman. Yeah. Getting the guts of your conversation, Kingfish. He ain't got no valor, huh? Yeah, you getting a half Nelson on the thing now, yeah. <laughs> and uh, as far as Rochester's concerned, we don't want no driver who is reckless enough to get hit on a grease rack. <laughs> Now, look, Amanda, do you follow me? Follow you, Kingfish. If you turn around, we can dance. <laughs> now, you mean the thing to do is to palm Rochester off on Mr. Benny, huh? That's it. Now, now watch, man. Watch. Yeah. Uh, Miss Benny! <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Uh, we have done research the same from every angle, and we want to give you the benefit of all the bricks. And make a settlement in your favor. That's what we want to do. Oh, well, well, that's different. Yeah, now, Mr. Benny, we're going to take our cards out of our sleeve and lay them right on the table. No. Now, <laughs> if you'll just bring your valet in here to witness this... Valet? Uh, like, uh, I don't have a valet. No valet? A man of your social position? Mm. A man who is the star of stage, screen, and radio? And who has done nominated himself for an Academy Award? <laughs> a man like you has got no valet? Well, I... Uh... No valet? Well, I, I tell you, fellas, I've been thinking a long time of getting a ballot, but somehow the right man hasn't come along. Ha, ha, ha. He's here now. <laughs> yes, sir, he's here already. Gentlemen, gentlemen, stop for me, sit around me. Quiet, Rochester, quiet. And shake hands with your new boss. Wait a minute, not so fast. Come on in, we gotta go. Now, wait a minute. Goodbye, Mr. Bennett. Good luck, Rochester. <laughs> I'm working for you now. Don't you think we ought to discuss money? Well, yes. Yes, Rochester. What do you think would be a fair salary? I ain't going to get that, so let's start somewhere else. <laughs> well, good, good. Grab that vacuum cleaner. We can talk as we walk. Ladies and gentlemen, according to the National Safety Council... The holiday season is an especially critical period as far as traffic accidents are concerned. So be careful if you drive the car or if you take a walk. Watch traffic lights, obey traffic regulations. The life you save may be your own. Thank you. <laughs> Jack, we'll be back in just a moment. But first, everybody, be happy, go lucky, and let's join in a real old-fashioned square dance. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, bright, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, bright today. I call the dance while couples twirl and swing and do si do And when I call out lucky strike, it always stops the show. I could have come with Luke or Cy, but Clem's the one for me. Called he knows fine tobacco, counts and LSMFT. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky. Today. Yes, friends, be happy, go lucky, enjoy your cigarettes. Puff by puff, you'll find Lucky's always give you perfect mildness. In fact, scientific tests confirmed by three independent consulting laboratories prove Lucky Strike is milder than any other principal brand. And puff by puff, you always get rich taste, too. All the deep down smoking enjoyment that comes from truly fine tobacco. Because LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So, friends, be happy, go lucky. Try a carton of Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Well, Mary, I think the way I've got the interview is all right. I think people will be interested in the way I found Rochester. Well, I think so, but Jack, how could you have possibly hit his car while I was up in the grass reek? <laughs> Oh, 
a natural mistake for a girl who's going back to the May Company tomorrow. Good night, folks. We're a little crazy. Day in the life of Dennis Day. Stay tuned for the English and Aussie show, which follows me. And this is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Would you like a shout out? Leave a comment in the section below. Tell me who you want to shout out to, who you want to shout out from, and we'll get it up here for you. Hey, we want to say thanks for tuning in. Please like and subscribe so you don't miss any. you got a lot more of these up there. Go check them out under the playlist. Leave us a comment. Tell us what you want to see, what you think, and we'll see you next time.